My name is Peter Tatchell. I'm the director of the Peter Tatchell Foundation, which is a small human rights organization based in London. We do a combination of UK-based human rights work and international human rights work as well. About half of our work is on LGBT rights and about another half is on other human rights issues. In Britain, we've made huge, huge progress, mostly over the last decade or so. Up until 1999, Britain had by volume the largest number of anti-gay laws of any country in the world, some of them dating back centuries. Since 1999, um, through a campaign of very sophisticated law reform, we have gradually one by one repealed those various anti-gay laws so that Britain today has some of the best laws anywhere in the world when it comes to the human rights of LGBT people. Well, it's true that we've made huge gains in recent years, but still there are problems with some of the laws. The last major law reform was the legalization of same-sex marriage in 2013. But that law is not truly equal marriage. Uh, we now have a system where we have legal segregation in marriage law. Under the 1949 Marriage Act, only opposite-sex couples are allowed to marry. Under the 2013 Marriage Act, only same-sex couples are allowed to marry. In other words, we have two separate systems of marriage law based on sexual orientation. And in our view, separate is not equal. There are also anomalies in pension inheritance when it comes to the death of a partner. So if you take the example of a married uh, person in a same-sex relationship, if their partner dies, they will have fewer legal rights to inherit the pension contributions of their deceased partner compared to if they are in a marriage under the 1949 Marriage Act between a man and a woman. And that quite clearly is not only discrimination, but it involves a quite severe financial penalty for uh, couples who have saved up many, many years to secure their pension, and then will find that because they're in a same-sex marriage, their surviving partner is not entitled to the same uh, rights to inherit their pension. So these are just a couple of examples of the way in which the law is not yet wholly equal. And there are much bigger, broader issues beyond the law, such as uh, homophobic, biphobic and transphobic bullying in our schools and hate crime on our streets. And we know that a third of all LGBT people in Britain have been victims of uh, anti-LGBT hate crime, ranging from verbal threats and abuse to actual physical violence. We also know that over half of all young people in our schools who are LGBT have been victims of various forms of homophobic, biphobic, or transphobic bullying. So quite clearly, you can have good laws, but if public attitudes, or at least a minority of public attitudes, have not caught up, then LGBT people can still face problems. Well, I'd say that the level of anti-LGBT discrimination is much less than it was. And you don't nowadays see or see very rarely the extreme overt, barefaced anti-LGBT discrimination that we used to see in years and decades past. That has dramatically reduced, but it still is a problem. And of course, sometimes people find ways of getting around the law. So they don't sack someone because they're gay. 
even if that's the you know the underlying reason what they say is they're not very much of a team player or they're not very good at their job and various other excuses so this has been a problem that women and black people have often faced we've had uh, for a long long time in britain laws against race and gender discrimination but sadly it still does go on to some extent and what we find is that employers increasingly uh, will find what sound like plausible reasons and excuses to get rid of a person when the real reason is because of prejudice not because of poor performance to some extent yes um, I do get a lot of death threats, hate mail, and sometimes actual physical assaults by homophobes, neo-Nazis, Islamist extremists, and others. But that's because of my human rights work and my campaigning, more so than the fact that I'm gay, although that obviously sometimes is a factor as well. Um, you know, in, in terms of the work I do, a lot of it is quite on the edge, controversial, groundbreaking, and for some people, quite threatening. You know, if you're challenging someone who's involved in uh, racism or homophobia, you often find a very hostile, negative, and perhaps even sometimes violent reaction. Uh, so for example, when I challenged face to face, the leader of the far right British National Party over his party's long history of anti-Semitism, homophobia, racism, and anti-Muslim prejudice. Um, he ran away, but he set his goons on me, and they, they actually physically assaulted me to get me out of the way, um, to stop me from asking my question. Well, of course, I react always non-violently. You know, whatever is done to me, you know, I don't respond in kind. I stick to the principle of non-violence, inspired by people like Mohandas Gandhi and Martin Luther King. And I think it's very, very important that, um, you know, we, we, are, we are not victimized and, and brutalized by bigots. But if that happens, that we should not resort or stoop to their methods. Well, we have a combination of two kinds of work. One is individual casework where we help particular individuals who come to us seeking help. So in 2014, we directly personally assisted 222 individuals who'd been victims of various um, human rights violations. Um, some of them were involved in immigration and asylum issues. Others uh, victims of uh, anti-LGBT violence and bullying. Uh, some were victims of discrimination. Um, others um, had questions like child custody or, of course, the, the anomaly in pension inheritance for same-sex marriage partners, which I mentioned earlier. So those are the kinds of issues we're dealing with uh, day in and day out. But in addition to helping these 222 individuals, we also do a lot of proactive campaigning and lobbying. So we will lobby government ministers, church leaders, um, newspaper editors, police chiefs. And then we have our ongoing big campaigns where we have won same-sex marriage, even though the law is flawed, but we haven't yet ended the ban on straight civil partnerships. So under the current law, we've got two systems, marriage and civil partnerships. Civil partnerships were originally invented by the government to block or forestall the campaign for same-sex marriage. And they were made explicitly only for same-sex couples. Now, I and others, or some others, never agreed with that exclusion. We always said that just as we wanted marriage opened up to people of all sexualities and gender identities, likewise, we also wanted civil partnerships opened up to opposite-sex couples. <coughs> couple as well as same-sex ones. Well, of course, our great hope is that we eventually, at least in Western countries and eventually the rest of the world, that we achieve a post-homophobic, post-biphobic, 
and pan post transphobic society where anti LGBT prejudice is history. That's what we're aiming for. We know that that is a long term project. It isn't going to happen overnight. It isn't even going to happen in my lifetime. But we are committed as a small NGO, the Peter Tatchell Foundation, working with others, individual activists and other NGOs, we're working together to move in that direction. Uh, my motto is don't accept the world as it is, dream of what the world could be, and then help make it happen. Thank you.